The 1,151st regular meeting and public hearing of the Livonia City Planning Commission. I wish to inform all interested persons in the audience that for petitions on tonight's agenda, which involve a question of zoning, the Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council, and the City Council, after holding their own public hearing, will make the final determination as to whether a petition is approved or denied. Uh, the Planning Commission holds the only public hearing on requests for preliminary plats and or vacating petitions. The Commission's recommendation is forwarded to City Council for the final determination as to whether the petition is accepted or rejected. If a petition requesting a waiver of use or a site plan is denied tonight, the petitioner will have 10 days in which to appeal the decision in writing to the City Council. Resolutions adopted by the City Planning Commission will become effective seven days after the date of adoption. Planning Commission and the professional staff have reviewed each of these petitions upon their filing. Staff has furnished the Commission with both approving and denying resolutions, which the Commission may or may not use depending on the outcome of the proceedings tonight. If the Secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mrs. Smiley. Present. Mrs. McHugh. Here. Mr. Bongiro. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Ventura. Here. Chair Magno is here. Chair Wolshaw is here. And also with us, we have Mark Tormina and Stephanie Reese from our planning department. Uh, again, I just want to remind folks in the audience with each of these petitions, we'll start with the planning department giving background information. <coughs> we'll then ask the petitioner to come forward and speak to the item. And then there'll be an opportunity for anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the item to also come forward. So with that, if the secretary is ready, we'll begin with uh, item number one on our agenda. Petition 2019-10-02-15, submitted by Tissio Architects, Inc., on behalf of Citizens Bank, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to Section 10.03i of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance Number 543, as amended, to construct and operate a freestanding drive-up ATM kiosk within the parking lot of the shopping center at 19043 to 19053 Middlebelt Road, located on the west side of Middlebelt between Clarita and Seven Mile Road, in the northeast quarter of section 11. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Tormino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Once again, this is a request to construct and operate a freestanding drive up ATM kiosk within the parking lot of the Mid Seven Shopping Plaza, which is located on the west side of Middle Belt Road, just south of Seven Mile. Uh, this property altogether is about 5.36 acres. The shopping center itself contains roughly 56,700 square feet of retail floor space. Customer parking, as you can see from this aerial photograph, is mostly located between the storefronts and Middle Belt Road. Main tenants within the plaza inc include <coughs> Pet Supplies Plus, which is located at the north end, and then Planet Fitness, located near the center. Drive-up ATM kiosks, uh, or this particular uh, drive-up ATM kiosk, would be located at the south end of the property. Uh, Going back to the zoning map, uh, Mid-7 Plaza currently is divided into three different zoning classifications. C1, which is the city's local business district, C2, which is general business, and then P, which is parking. The applic an application is pending that would change the zoning of the southerly 65 feet of the parking lot, which is zoned parking, to the C1 classification in anticipation of constructing this freestanding drive-up ATM. The City Council gave first reading on the rezoning on October 2nd. Second reading and roll call are on hold pending a review of the site plan. Pursuant to Section 10.03L of the ordinance, drive up windows do require waiver use approval. Citizens Bank would lease the premises where the ATM kiosk is proposed, thus it is not or it would not be located on a separate parcel. Nor would it have separate access to either Middle Belt or Seven Mile Road. Instead, Access to the kiosk would be provided by means of the existing drive aisles and approaches within the shopping center. The ATM uh, kiosk would occupy an area that measures roughly 20 feet by 90 feet, again, on the south side of the property next to an existing parking lot drive aisle that runs east and west from Middle Belt Road to the back of the shopping com uh, complex. The area needed for the kiosk would displace nine parking spaces. Mid-7 requires no fewer than 302 parking spaces to meet the ordinance, and even with the loss of these nine parking spaces, they would comply with the minimum parking requirement as 307 spaces would, be, would remain available. The required 
setback for any structures within the C1 district is 75 feet. In this case, the kiosk itself, which is considered a structure, would be set back roughly 175 feet from Middle Belt Road. The kiosk would be located on a curved island that measures approximately 30 feet in length by 8 feet in width. The overall dimensions of the kiosk, including the canopy, would be 12 feet in height by 9 feet in width and 8 feet in depth. The canopy would partially overhang the driver's side of the drive up lane. Customers would enter the one way drive up lane from the west and then exit to the east towards Metal Belt. The kiosk includes a light as well as a clearance bar intended to protect the canopy. Drive up services are required to have enough waiting or stacking space equal to no fewer than four car lengths in addition to the space at the drive up window. The plan shows protected stacking for three vehicles including the one at the kiosk. Service lanes for the drive up windows are required to be at least 12 feet in width and a proposed drive up lane in this case would be 12 feet wide, thus it would comply. There is no bypass lane required in this case. As you can see from these illustrations, the four <coughs> sides of the canopy would contain sign panels, that, sign panels that identify Citizens Bank. No dimensions are provided, however, only one sign is allowed Thus, the signage will require a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Lastly, the ordinance as it pertains to this type of use requires that drive up facilities not be used for any purpose except a principal business use of the site. In this case, the principal use of the site is not banking but instead general retail. Thus, the approval to deviate from the stipulation will require City Council approval by means of a two thirds majority vote. On that, Mr. Chair, and if you give me a second, I will lean out the correspondence. Certainly. I apologize for not having it ready. It's okay. First item is from the Office of the Treasurer, and it's dated October 31st. They indicate uh, that they have reviewed the uh, address in connection with the proposed petition, and at this time there are no outstanding amount amounts receivable for taxes and therefore have no objections to the proposal. That letter is signed by Linda Shield, Treasurer of the City of Livonia. Next is a similar letter from the Department of Finance indicating uh, that there are no outstanding amounts receivable, general or water and sewer, and therefore have no objections to the proposal. That letter is signed by Connie Kumpula, Chief Accountant, and that's dated October 22nd. Um, and that is the extent of the correspondence. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taramina. Is there any questions for our planning department? Mr. Long? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll wait for Mark to... No, I apologize. There are it's a few okay. That's yeah. okay. Uh, Mr. There. Taramina, um, a couple things. One, I, I noticed in looking at the resolution, I think there's some typos in it. Um, this is for the mid-7 shopping center, correct? What we're considering tonight? Uh, that's correct, and okay. you're right. I noticed that right on the top. It does say Mary yeah, and both the approving and denying resolutions uh, we have, and and we. This commission, I'm trying. I'm not sure I remember the timing of it, or if I was a member of the commission at the time. But uh, um, was a similar kiosk considered by this commission um, in the not at at Mary, Mary Five or at a different? Yes. Uh, so um, information regarding a. A previous petition similar to this one uh, was provided in the staff report. It was in 2016 that Bank of America re requested to construct a similar type of uh, structure uh, at uh, the Mary Five Plaza located on, on uh, Five Mile Road and Five Mile, or Merriman and Five Mile. Right. And uh, that petition was denied, and I think we provided the reasons. And then they did not appeal that ruling to the uh, plan that is correct. to the city council, which would have been their right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. And, and Mr. Chairman, I uh, apologize, but I, there were a couple more items of correspondence. Yes, Mr. Torrey, go ahead. Yes, uh, one from our inspection department, dated November fifteenth, indicating that they have no objections to the petition, and that's uh, signed by Jerome Hanna, director of inspection. A similar letter of no objection dated October 24th coming from the Division of Police and signed by Brian Lee, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. A letter again of no objection uh, from the Livonia Fire and Rescue Division 
signed by Greg Marshall, Fire Marshall, and dated October 23rd. And lastly, we have a letter from the Engineering Division dated October 23rd that reads, the existing parcel is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer. The information submitted does not show proposed alterations for the utility services, so it does not appear that there will be any impacts to existing systems. It should be noted that should the developer need to do any work within the Middle Belt Road right-of-way, permits will need to be obtained from the Wayne County Department of Public Services. And that letter signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Termina. Is there, again, any additional questions for our planning staff? Seeing none, our petitioner is here. Mr. Ticcio, good Ms. evening. Aid. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, as before, we are here seeking approval for the drive-up ATM. Uh, this is a result of the branch bank that has now closed that's on, on the middle belt north of seven mile, about a quarter mile north. And, and they Tissio, want to maintain and capture those same customers. Yes, sir. Mr. Ticcio, can we just get your address for I'm our sorry. record? I'm sorry, 19815 Farmington Road. Great, Excuse thank you. Me. I should know better than that. <laughs> um, and we're You've also, done this a couple times. <laughs> yes, a couple. We're also uh, seeking the, the variance for one parking spot as discussed at the study session that the bank did a study of their uh, drive-up ATMs and found that they have never had four in a queue. Rarely do they have three, and that's the matter of monitoring their transaction times so they know when the cars come and leaving. Um, and the only other thing to add is I submitted a letter to the Planning Commission asking if this gets approved for a seven-day variance for the uh, waiver. We did receive that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions for our petitioner? Ms. Smiley. Um, good evening. Uh, mine are about um, security on the site. I assume there's cameras on the uh, kiosk, right? That is correct. Okay. Are they uh, monitored in real time or are they just recording? I'll ask Mr. Paul Gagel. He's the project manager for Citizens to Thank address you. that. Good evening, Paul Gagel, Citizens Bank. 27777 Franklin Road, Southfield. Uh, with regards to the cameras, we actually have a camera inside the ATM. Um, there are no cameras outside of the ATM, so anything that it's, who's ever using the ATM is captured, their image is captured. Okay, is that in real time? Would that, are you recording yes. those and then check them later, or is somebody doing that? No, our, our system is monitored electronically, and as soon as you put your card in the cap, the uh, Images yep. captured and sent to our monitoring center back in Rhode Island. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. And what kind of lighting do you have there? Uh, this kiosk has down lighting as well as the illuminated sign, but it also has down lighting to provide security, uh, which is uh, pretty, I don't know the exact lumens, but it is pretty bright. It lights up the area very well, so it's secure for the customers. Plus we have additional site lighting that's already existing in the parking lot in that area. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions for our petitioner? Mr. Ventura. Uh, just a clarification, sir, on the uh, camera. So to be clear, the camera is only recording the person that's using the ATM. There's well, the no surveillance of the area around the ATM. Well, it, it's a direct shot. So anything that comes in front of the ATM, it, it's, um, it, it records continuously, much like you see on TV when they show something on the news, that something captured by a camera. It is monitored, but the thing is, the bank monitors the transactions of the ATM. Now, in a, in a police situation, if video or something was needed, we certainly would work with the police to help if our cameras would capture every, anything. But it, it's not an overall, it, it's restricted to a certain area. And, and I would actually have to get a little more detail on that to make a, a, a clearer uh, definition of that. Okay, and I don't want to get into the weeds on that with you either since you're not prepared to discuss it. So my other question would be if there were someone in distress at the ATM, someone off camera pointing a gun at them, is there a panic button or any kind of an emergency signal that could be, that is activated that would, that would notify somebody in real time? I will have to check that out. I don't know. To be honest with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Uh, any other questions for our petitioner? Mr. Caramagna? Mr. Chair, uh, you'd mentioned that there is a there's a lease on this on this piece of land for this uh, for this kiosk and the 
and the, the driveway there. How many year lease is this? Uh, we're starting off with a five year lease with renewable options. Okay, and, and uh, this seems to be a way of the future, I don't know. But uh, proposing this doesn't work out for you. Uh, you have something in your lease with the landholder that uh, requires you to remove this, uh, this, uh, this piece of uh, building you've got here? Yeah, that, that actually goes more towards our leasing uh, team, but I'm sure we have clauses in there that we would you know, be able to get out of the lease and provide remuneration to the landlord for some reason. I don't know the particular details of the lease as, as per that clause. Well, I, think, I, may, yeah. ahead, I believe I remember reading the lease and it had that should they uh, vacate the property, they have to restore it to its original uh, condition. Okay. And so five-year lease, and if it doesn't work out, you put it back to, to what it was, parking lot. Um, the other thing I had is, uh, and the overhang, the canopy over the, over the uh, kiosk machine, it hangs over a little bit. I'm assuming so rain doesn't fall on you. You're sticking your arm out of the car. That's, is, that's is, correct. Is there an overhead clearance sign on that? Yes. Yes, 12 so feet. It's 12, 12 feet. It's 12 feet from the curb, another 6 inches, so it's 12 6. 12 6, and that's posted right on. I didn't see it on the pictures, but it's yes. posted right on there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. Mr. Long? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as mentioned earlier, a similar uh, proposal was brought up in 2016 by Bank of America and was... Uh, was not approved by this uh, uh, commission, um, but you know that was three years ago. Can you talk a little about the the changing industry? I mean, you're closing branches. Why? Why? You know, why are we just doing ATMs and not branches here? Well, th those decisions are strategy decisions that are made at a much higher pay grade than mine. <laughs> so I, I really don't know what all the driving factors are for them to make a decision in a, in a market area. I do know that we, throughout our entire footprint from here to Michigan to the East Coast, we've had these situations come up and there's certain um, guidelines that they follow. As I said, I'm not sure what they all are, but it's something that we're going through right now, a program we're doing right now. So. Can you speak to, uh, off the top of your head, or do you know how many of these you have in the metro area or these standalone kiosks? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, they have uh, there, They have 300 in their port full portfolio. And I have to check my records, but I think there's about a dozen or so in Michigan, if okay. not more. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Last you. Thank year we opened up uh, recently uh, we opened up a couple, one at uh, Nine Mile and in, uh, in Coolidge in Oak Park mm -hmm. and in um, Taylor at uh, Goddard and Allen Road. We have remote kiosk that we've opened up. So the recent projects that I've worked on. And my last question, which I think it's my last question, is at the study session we were uh, given the crime statistics uh, for, for these type of things in, or lack thereof. Could you, uh, for the record, yes. please share those? Yeah, there, um, again, uh, citizens went back to their records, and of their 300 remote ATMs, they've never had a robbery. They've had the skimming issues, and they'd only happened twice in their 300 uh, portfolio of just strictly standalone ATMs, nothing in, with a, a connected to the branch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other questions for our petitioner? Ms. I have Ms. McHugh, and then we'll go with Ms. Smiley. Um, I know we stated that that branch, the uh, middle belt north of Seven Mile, is closing, correct? It's closed. closed. It's closed. Okay. That happened quick. October, October 16th. Anyways, um, the letter that is included in our packet gives some statistics as to the number of transactions that go on. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, but when it talks about the current branch at that middle belt and seven mile, it had 48,000 transactions at their walk-up ATM in the last 12 months, so 4,000 a month. So I guess if you can just talk a little bit more about need and, and why they might put that there versus somewhere else in relationship to closing the branch. Uh, uh, from what I understand, that branch is a leased property as well. So their lease is up, they'll be moving. And I'm, I'm assuming that the landlord is not interested in only leasing for an ATM. So they had to find a different location to continue to capture the customers 
that frequented that branch. Uh, if you move a mile or two away, you tend to lose exponentially more and more customers that you've captured through the years. So they've been looking at a location that's close enough to that branch where they could locate a landlord and put in a new, uh, put in a new drive up uh, ATM. Okay, thank you. And then it, it is my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but the other branch on Middle Belt, is that also closing or is that? There's no bran other branch on Middle Belt. There's one on Five Mile Road. So that's the next closest. That's the next closest one. Okay. And that's east of Farmington Road and that is staying. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes. Well, Plus, we also have a branch at Six Mile in Newburgh as well. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ms. McHugh. Mrs. Smiley? Well, I'm going back to security. Um, that skimming thing, so th that's when somebody puts something in your ATM so that they can read your card. Is that what skimming is? Correct. And our security team does make sure they put anti-skimming devices on it and they monitor it. And the machine is serviced by a third party and all that is checked each time they go out to either load cash or um, service the machine. And then my last question is, how many times in a week would you load and unload money, you know, like to pick up the deposits and put new money in there for withdrawals? Do you know? No, I don't. Oh, each, no. each machine is different, okay. and it depends how much they initially load the machine. Okay. And then as they see the transactions, it may be something where, okay, we need to increase this to decrease frequency of visits, or they may set a threshold to say minimal risk, or this is our our appetite for risk of the amount we'll put in the machine at any one time. Okay. Given the That's our cash management group that takes care of that with ATM administration. Given the amount of transactions that was recorded, I think it would be several times a week. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Any other questions for our petitioner? Uh, if not, uh, Mr. Uh, Gagel, I just have one quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned some of the other uh, locations that you've installed these eight freestanding ATMs. Are those also in strip mall parking lots? Is that basically what you're targeting for? The uh, location at Nine Mile and Coolidge is in a strip mall. Okay. Um, the location at Goddard and Allen is actually in a branch parking lot. Uh, when we relocated that branch, we opted uh, the strategy was to uh, do an interior build out and put a remote ATM in the parking lot of uh, the leased building. Okay. All right, I just want to get a feel for where you generally locate these things. All right, good, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't see anyone coming forward. Uh, so we'll go back to the commission. Is there uh, any additional questions or our motion would be in order? Mr. Chair? This is Smiley. Yes, I will make an approving resolution that the request to construct and operate a freestanding drive up ATM kiosk within the parking lot at, at the mid seven, is that shopping center, is that the correct one? Correct. Uh, is uh, at whatever address that is, is hereby approved subject to the city council approval and the following conditions that the location of the freestanding drive up ATM kiosk shall be in accordance to the site plan shown on the plan labeled test fit, marked sheet number P1 dated October the 18th of 2019 as revised, prepared by Tissio Architects Incorporated. That the enla enlarged plans and elevations uh, plans marked sheet P, uh, number P2 dated October the 18th, 2019 as revised, prepared by Tissio Architects Incorporated is hereby approved and shall be adhered to that only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. That unless approved by the proper local authority, any type of exterior advertising such as a promotional flags, streamers, sponsor vehicles designed to attract attention to passing motors shall be prohibited. That no LED light band or exposed neon shall be permitted on this freestanding drive up ATM kiosk that the specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department at the time of application for building permits and 
pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia. This approval is valid for a period of one year only <coughs> from the date of the approval by the city council. And unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Do we have support? Support. We have a motion to approve by Mrs. Smiley, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with Mr. Long. Uh, is, I would ask the maker and supporter of the motion if we could, and the planning director, if we could add something requiring any subsequent user of this to come back to the planning commission if there's... Start over if the, Absolutely. At the end of the lease, if there's a new bank that takes over that wants mm -hmm. to, you know, so that we're at least getting a no. crack at uh, what it's going to look like. Okay. Okay, we have nods Good. of approval from our maker and, and uh, supporter, Mr. Tormina. That it was one of the items I was going to raise, <coughs> and the standard language we provide is to limit the waiver use to this petitioner only, and uh, any request for a new user would have to be approved by city council. Okay, that's um, fine. Which is what is, is typically required. Secondly, if we could consider um, that they will require uh, waiving two special requirements, one pertaining to the stacking, uh, the number of vehicles uh, that was mentioned earlier, as well as uh, the uh, principal use of the uh, property, both of which would have to be waived by city council by a majority vote, super majority vote, excuse me. Okay, and our maker of our motion is okay with those? Yes. yes. Well, and supporter? Yes. All right, we have nods of approval and yeses again. Is there any other uh, discussion or comments on the motion? Uh, hearing none, we will uh, go to the secretary for roll call. Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mrs. McHugh? Aye. Mr. Bongiro? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Mr. Ventura? No. Chair Minor votes aye. Chair Mulshaw? Votes no. Motion passes. And uh, we did have a request for a waiver of the seven days. Is someone willing to make that request, uh, that motion? Aye. So moved. Okay, moved by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any support? Support. Support by Mrs. Smiley. Uh, again, I think we'll, uh, well, we'll go on a roll call on, on a request to waive the seven day. And we'll do it to Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mr. Bongero? Aye. Mr. Long? Aye. Mr. Ventura? No. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Wilshaw? Votes aye. And that motion passes. Uh, so thank you very much and good luck with your project. Thank you. And we now go into the miscellaneous item section of our agenda, item number two. Petition 2017-08-06-09 submitted by Bashir El Haiti requesting a one year Extension of all plans in connection with a proposal to construct a gas station at 27430 Seven Mile Road, located on the northwest corner of Seven Mile and Inkster Roads in the southeast quarter of Section 1. Oh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. And Mr. Tormino. Thank you. Again, this is a one year extension of a waiver use involving the construction of a gas station on property located at the northwest corner of Seven Mile and Inkster Roads. Council granted approval for the gas station on October 15th of 2018. Then in February of 2019, the ZBA granted variances involving lot area, building setback, as well as parking. The action of the Zoning Board of Appeals was challenged in circuit court by neighboring property owners. And on October 8th of this year, the court affirmed the ZBA's decision granting the variances. However, because of the delay resulting in the court case, the petitioner was unable to secure permits or commence construction prior to the one year expiration of the site plan. But going back and looking at the plan, to refresh everyone's memory, this is a one story gas station that would measure approximately 2,490 square feet. The interior contains a retail display area, cashier counter, office, as well as a restroom. The exterior is mainly brick as well as some smooth faced stone and ephus. There would be a new fueling center that would have four dual sided pump islands with the capacity to accommodate up to eight vehicles and an overhead canopy would cover the fuel dispensers. And with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I will note that the only correspondence we received on this item uh, is 
confirmation from both the city treasurer as well as uh, our finance department indicating that there are no outstanding balances due for taxes or for general or water and sewer. Thank you. I can thank you, Mr. Tarmina. Any questions for our planning department? Seeing none, our petitioner is here, I believe, this evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Again, we ask that you start with your name and address. Sure, Bashir Hadi, 20365 Audette, Dearborn, Michigan. Thank you, sir. And uh, is there anything you'd like to add from what you've already heard? No, as you've said, uh, you know, we, we got held up in the process of uh, submitting uh, plans to the city and getting them approved. Uh, per the city attorney, they asked us to hold off until everything was worked out in circuit court. Once that was all cleared, we submitted our plans. We received notes back from the planning department and we're working with our architect to resolve any issues and make changes according to the uh, planning department. Thank you, Mr. Elhadi. Just is a point there... of clarification, yes. if I may. He's referring to the engineering department. Uh, in my apologies. Of... Oh, yeah, engineering fine. department. <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of different departments in the city. Yep. That's okay. Uh, do we have any, anyone on the council who uh, has any questions for uh, our petitioner? Mr. Bonchero. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Elhadi, how long do you own the property? I'm, just, I'm actually a project manager for the property. Um, the property has been owned for quite some time and uh, I believe that 2010. 2010. Okay. Um, was the purchase date. Okay. The reason I ask is I know um, that property, there was a gas station years ago. Yes. And in, I think it's like 2008 or 9, the DEQ flagged it for contamination. Yes. And I understand there was a cleanup, but they don't know the results. I was down at the building department. Do you have anything on that? to state that it was that the site is clean uh, I don't have exact information was that all cleaned up can you help me uh, maybe there's some more stuff to be done but where they're they gonna do it typically okay. you do like an environmental study right because if you bought it after 09 exactly. you don't know if it's clean we're assuming it was I know there was soil taken off mm -hmm. yes and they pulled and, the tanks out and they pulled all the yeah, and it's common with gas stations, they'll yeah. see yep. there's, there's contamination. That was just some one concern I had because they don't know. The building department didn't have record that it was, in fact, clean. So, they're assuming, but they don't know because that's part of the DEQ requirement. Right, right. and so typically before we uh, install any tank or, or put anything back in the ground, the DEQ has to give an approval that the proper remediation was done to the property before we install anything new. Okay. But you're going to verify. You don't have anything right now no. showing it does. So, okay. It's got to be verified by the DEQ. Okay. Yeah. And, sir, can we just get your name so we can attribute your comments? Sam Hamoud. Okay. And your address? 25896 Thimber Trail, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Thank you, Mr. Hamoud. Have a Any question. other questions? Ms. Smiley? Uh, on Dave's um, question, uh, Mark, wouldn't they have to engineering or inspection or somebody have to have that available before they could start doing something on that I property? I don't know if that was one of the comments provided by the engineer, engineering department uh, as part of its initial review of this or not, but I could check on that. I did, I, I inquired about it. They had no record and I asked Jerome because they said it would have been a building issue and Jerome just stated that they made them fence off. It was soil removed, but he never got any receipt of like a clean slate from the DEQ, which he said would not be uncommon for them, but he, he had no record of it. So and to I, me, I, I feel like it's a concern that we should know that that's been properly cleaned up. Right. Because there is under, underground storage, uh, storm retention. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know you're going to dig up for that, and I don't know if you've taken that into account, but yeah, and on site retention required. Right, and I'm sure we can get uh, the proper clarification from the DEQ showing that it was properly remediated. Okay, I think I'd like to see that, so. If I can, if I can add that, then. Okay, Ms. Smiley, anything no, that, else? No, that's exactly what I, I, I would want them to proceed if it's contaminated and we're not gonna be able to do that. But thank you, Mr. Bongero, thank you, Chair. All right, is there any other questions for our petitioner? Sure. Mr. Ventura. Mr. Elhadi, uh, at the uh, study session, we asked you if you had all the drawings and have submitted everything that's required by both the planning and engineering department. Uh, we submitted uh, we submitted the plans. The site plans were, if I'm not mistaken, they were already approved, um, but we had to Wayne stop. Oh, I'm sorry? You just send it to the Wayne County for some. 
people when came with when we came to pull the permits, mm -hmm. they said they have to go to the Wayne County and get some approval on plans. So we submitted that to the Wayne County. Right. Yeah. So we submitted plans to the county, as, and uh, those plans were approved, if I'm not mistaken. And then we were contacted by the city attorney, and they told us to hold off on any further development with the property until they resolved the litigation that they had pending. All right, I guess my question is, at this point, are all of the drawings done? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and so you're simply awaiting for the approval of all the submittals? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, when do you anticipate your break ground? As soon as we get... Uh... Once, we, once we work everything out with the engineering department, with the city, and with the county, and... Uh, so that would be as soon as you get a permit? As soon as we get a permit. And then it probably... If everything went well, I would say I anticipate we'd break ground in the spring of 2020. We have everything on order, the tanks, the pumps, everything. Yeah, we've already engaged a general contractor. We've already engaged a fuel supplier for the site. Uh, we're just simply uh, needing a, an extension on the plans that we submitted. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ventura. Any other questions for our petitioner? No one else? Okay, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak for this item or for or against? We have one person coming forward. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Deborah Fallis, and I live at 19304 Rensselaer, Livonia, Michigan. Um, I submitted some paperwork to the planning board that two petitions that were notarized of people with the adjoining property who said they did not uh, um, they did not know about this. I also have paperwork, their petition, that they asked the people in the area, they had no intention of letting us know it was a gas station again. The ground had, was contaminated in three areas. I talked to the uh, guy who went over there to inspect it. When he went there to inspect it, he showed, he showed me three areas that were contaminated. Um, I don't know where the paperwork is on that. Um, he, this, uh, the building, uh, Mr. Mr. Termini. Term, Termini? Termini? Close Termina? enough. <laughs> All right. he, uh, he has a petition, I mean the affidavit stating that they did not, that we do not want another gas station in that area. For one, those area, the gas station, the property is way too small to put a gas station on that area. You guys waived 5,000 square feet or something for this building site. Plus you waived parking areas in the buildings, in the building, and you waived our petition, I mean our right to have say in this. You also waived the people who live there. You waived our rights also. We don't, we the people don't feel that that uh, it's right that we were waived. We were, some people say they never received any notice. I have affidavit, two affidavits with the notarized affidavits from the people with the joint prepping stating that they never received any information of a gas station being built there. Back in the day when they tore the gas station down, it was a very small little shed is all it was. It wasn't. It wasn't a great big convenience store, and the gas station. We the corner of that section. We already have a gas station on their side. Seven Eleven on that side. Today, as today, I was watching the the truck that delivers stuff to the Seven Eleven, and that parking lot is twice the size of this gas. This property, the gas station, will be built on, and it. They were having a hard time getting in there. Traffic was held up on Seven Mile, trying to get their semi into the parking lot at the 7-Eleven. A gas station that has more than that, and a convenience store gas station. They have at least two to three loads of gas that has to be delivered by a semi every week, every week. They have, um, their vendors who deliver the, the goods to the store also. Our, it is so congested in that corner. 
that people are driving around the block to get away from any, just even the light. So my corner of my house has became like a traffic, like a main street right on the corner. The property value for the people in our area with another gas station built there will bring my property value down 10%. I feel that it is wrong to have another gas station built there. It is also competition for the little people who, the small business owners in that area. We already have a whole subdivision in that area that is not even a shopping center that is not even being used since Walmart was built. So to build in an, another competition, we have five gas stations within one mile radius of, of this corner five already in our in the radius. I understand that, that people want to catch the traffic, but to catch the traffic, we only have one lane. We don't have four lanes of traffic where people can get in and out. I can't even get out of my subdivision. I have to drive five blocks over at a certain time of day just to get out to go to my church. So, and I work at, I cook for the Salvation Army that is in Farmington right on Inkster Road. So I have to go out Inkster Road to get to where I cook twice a week. Um, I just feel that it's ridiculous that we weren't even asked as, as, as homeowners if we were, and if this gas station does get built, I, I think I will sell my house in this area. Maybe I'll move to a better area of Livonia <laughs> because I do like Livonia. And um, that's all I have to say. Well, thank you, Mrs. Fells. Appreciate your comments. And Mr. Toramina, when uh, Mrs. Fells talks about the fact that the requirement for uh, consent of neighboring properties uh, was waived, that was done by city council. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, the petitioner um, did not uh, meet that requirement. Uh, and then petitioned council to waive that after uh, a significant debate regarding that issue, that requirement. Uh, at the uh, in the end, they decided to waive that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I okay. Don't, I don't have a, their petition that they did bring along to us. This petition does not say anything about a gas station. It just says a family business in the area. Right. It doesn't even give the Pacific. Eight. Specific property that right. they were talking about. We, we do have a copy of that, so thank you. you, thank you. Yes, thank yeah. you. And, and all of that was pointed out to the council uh, at the time they considered this. Yes, yeah, so that was a decision by the city council. It wasn't our decision. Okay. But, but thank you for, for mentioning this. This isn't that. city council? No, this is no. the planning commission. We just recommend oh. to the city council. So okay. this is going to go through another process at city council where you'll have another opportunity to speak as well. I wish I had known that because I think I'm getting a fluid out. Uh, well, we'll try not to hold you up too much longer. Uh, is there any other people in the audience wishing to speak on this item? Uh, I don't see anyone else coming forward. The petitioner, is there any other comments that you would like to make? Yes. I'd just like to point out, I understand the concerns that she has regarding the property and development of it. Um, as I said, we did, we did engage a supplier for the location. We've already engaged a general contractor. Um, most of our sites are 24-hour locations. They're well lit. Um, we typically use the evening shift. Uh, we have our CSRs clean and stock the locations. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we do intend to abide by all the rules and regulations of the city of Livonia, and we do intend on providing our the community that we service a clean and safe location that they can visit. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Alhady. Uh, do we have some questions for our petitioner? Uh, on, you, on that matter, you said your hours of operation are 24. Typically. You also said you'd consider um, limiting those maybe to like 5.30 to 11. Yes. Can we do that? Yes. I, I only mentioned that we typically use 24-hour 24, 24 oh, okay. locations. Not all of our locations are 24 hours. Some but, locations do close in the evening. Great. That would be great. Thank you. Yes. Okay, this is McHugh. Um, we mentioned this last week, but just to clarify, I know she had mentioned on the petition that it stated a family-owned business. Yes. It is a family-owned business, yes, is that correct? Is. How yes. many stations do you own around? Well, 
Mr. Sam over here, he's going to be the owner. He's planning, intends on running this station with his wife and his son. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions for our petition, Mr. Lauren? No, um, that is a, you know, a small site. Will you have any trouble getting the trucks in and out to do refill, refueling? Our architects, they, we've had much tighter sites that we've had to deal with. Uh, our architects, they typically design locations where the, the pads are located in an easily accessible area. And they also provide big enough tanks so that we're not having to send multiple loads throughout the week. So you, typically you'll see one delivery and that truck won't be seen again for another week. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bongero. Uh, one question, Ian, sure. um, and it might not be for the petitioner, it might be for Mark. If the hours of operation are from 5.30 a.m. to 11 p.m., in the event they would want to switch to 24 hours, does that have to go through? That would require an amendment to the waiver use that would, uh, that would um, require a public hearing before this body, followed by city council um, approval. Okay, so. thank you. Thanks. It's an excellent question. Uh, any other questions for the petitioner or for our planning staff? I don't see anything else, so thank you for coming again. Thank we'll you. We'll have a motion here soon. Thank you. I'll look to the commission. Is there a motion on this item? Mr. Ventura. Offer an approving resolution that the request for a one-year extension of all plans in connection with the proposal to construct a gas station at 27 437 Mile Road, subject to city council approval and the following conditions. Number one, that the request for a one-year extension of a waiver use approval by Bashir El Hadi in a letter received by the City of Livonia on October 15, 2019, is hereby approved. Number two, that all conditions imposed by Council Resolution number 366-18 in connection with the petition number 2017-08-02-09, which permitted the construction of a gas station at 27437 Mile Road, <clears throat> shall remain in effect to the extent that they are not in conflict with the foregoing condition. Number three, that all conditions imposed by City Council Resolution number 367-18 and 368-18, <clears throat> which waive the minimum lot size requirement and the need for at least 65% of the residential neighbors within a 400 foot radius to approve the proposal shall remain in effect to the extent they are not in conflict with the foregoing condition. <clears throat> Number four, hours of operation shall be limited to the period between 5.30 a.m. and 11 p.m. to minimize disturbance to the surrounding neighborhood. Okay, and is there support? Support. We have a motion by Mr. Ventura, supported by Mrs. McHugh, uh, to recommend approval of the extension. Is there any discussion on that motion? Mrs. that we had uh, something about, about Mr. Bontero's concern about the, uh, if that's all right with you, about the, the property being properly uh, abated or whatever by the DEQ that it's clean to start with. Yeah, Could I you think add? provide something that we know certification by the DEQ that the contamination has been remediated. If that's all right. And Mr. Yeah, Tormina, do you understand that in a way that you can add that to our resolution? <laughs> Uh, yes, I do, um, you have something and it could be something that requires ongoing remediation. So, uh, my only concern would be that it has been remediated would imply that uh, it's received full closure uh, on its current open status. Um, I'd agree with that. That's correct. Okay, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, I like that. You can write that up. All right, Mr. Ventura is okay with that, yep. and Mrs. McHugh. All right. Is there any other discussion on the motion? If not, the secretary is ready. We'll um, take a vote on the amended motion. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chair Wolshaw. Votes aye. Motion passes, and this recommendation will go on to city council for their approval. Uh, Mrs. Feltz, uh, since you're still in the audience, uh, do keep an eye open there. This will go to city council. You'll have an opportunity to speak there as well. Thank you, and good luck to, uh, to the petitioner on their project. Thank you. I did find another house in the morning. All right, <laughs> great. Uh, all right, so we'll move on to pending items section of our agenda. Now we have item number three.
Petition 2019-09-02-14, submitted by Arco Construction Company, Inc., requesting waiver use approval pursuant to Section 11.03N1 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance Number 543 as amended to construct and operate a senior assisted living center, Clear Path Assisted Living, at 33579 8 Mile Road, located on the south side of 8 Mile Road, between Farmington and Gill Roads on the northwest corner of Section 4. Okay, and uh, I believe this item was tabled. Is that correct? That is so correct. We'll need a motion to remove this item from the table. So moved. By Mr. Long, supported by... Smiley. By Go ahead. We'll go with Mr. Ventura. <laughs> this is a motion by Mr. Long and Mr. Ventura to remove this item from the table. If there's no objection, we'll show seven to remove this item from the table, and we can go to Mr. Tormina for an update. So when the Planning Commission originally uh, reviewed these plans, uh, the main concern expressed at the time was the uh, design of the building, uh, really a concern over the amount of uh, masonry being uh, applied to the exterior of the building. Uh, the petitioner has submitted revised plans uh, this is a rendering showing uh, the front of the proposed assisted living facility. This is the north elevation, so this is the side of the building that would face towards Eight Mile Road. Uh, brick has been added uh, to the uh, to the face of the uh, of this one-story uh, building. Uh, it's also been increased along the west elevation of the building, uh, and that's the side facing uh, the parking lot, which will have considerable exposure uh, from, from that angle. Uh, not so much the back side, which uh, borders a wall, as well as the east side, which borders a, uh, a masonry wall. So they've added the brick uh, really where the building is most visible to the public. They've also added brick, brick around uh, the, uh, the screen wall for the ground-mounted uh, equipment, which is at the southwest corner of the, uh, the building. Uh, you had a couple of questions of the petitioner at the study meeting regarding the overall percentage of brick and I think requested that they bring a material sample board. Uh, they're here uh, this evening to address those uh, those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tormina. And there's no updated correspondence, correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll go to the petitioner who's here. Good evening. Hello, uh, I'm Jim Eisenhart, 204 uh, Park Road, Webster Groves, Missouri. I'm with Clear Path. Uh, we're back looking for the waiver use. Uh, John here is going to go through some of the materials, but we were trying to meet your suggestions and add brick around the enclosures and add more to the building. Excellent. Thank you. And your uh, We didn't really like here. brick as much as we do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I'm John Albel. I'm with Arco Construction. My address is 323 Simmons Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you. Um, so as you can see, we, uh, we incorporated, as Mark mentioned, a uh, third building material, which is that uh, the brick before you there. And um, we've added, as Nolan had mentioned in the study session, 88% more masonry on the north elevation, 44% on the west elevation, which brings our total across the whole building at 50-50. So we're actually 50% masonry, 50% hardy siding. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that update. Uh, do we have any questions for our petitioner? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long. I have a comment. Um, we appreciate your uh, willingness to work with the commission. Um, you know, the, the, that area that most of the other buildings are brick, and I think this, what you, you, the upgrades you've done will, will fit into that area much better. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Long. Is there any other questions or comments? Just one, just one question, Mr. Chair. Chair. Just uh, out of curiosity, what is um, the facility rent for, like a studio and a one bedroom? Uh, and it, uh, we have different levels of service, but a, a studio will start around uh, $3,900 to $4,000 per month, and it'll go up to memory care, which is our most expensive, which is around $5,500 to $5,900 a month. What is, uh, like, what's the occupancy percentage like? Are your buildings full or? So we have nine facilities that are mirrored after this building and our average occupancy is 93% right now. So we have several that are at 100% and we have one that has um, been open for less than a year 
and is still um, it's hovering around 88 percent. So they they do get above 93 percent in senior housing is considered uh, to be full because of the turnover, but we do get above 93 too. But our average is 93. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bongero. Any other questions for our petitioner? I don't see any other questions. There's no one else in the audience to <laughs> speak to this item. So uh, last word goes to our petitioner. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we make our decision? We just appreciate all the comments and we're looking forward to being in Livonia, hopefully. Very good, thank you, sir. Uh, with that, we'll go to our commission. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long. I'd like to offer an approving resolution that the request to construct and operate a senior assisted living facility, Clear Path Assisted Living at 33579 Eight Mile Road is hereby approved, subject to city council approval, and the following conditions. Number one, that the site layout as shown on the paving and grading plan identified as sheet number C3 dated September 18th, 2019, prepared by Noah and Frost engineers is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number two, that the declaration of easements verifying the subject property shares parking and access with the abutting shopping center site be supplied to the inspection department at the time a building permit is applied for. Number three, that the landscaping plan identified as sheet number L1 dated September 18th, 2019, prepared by NOAC and Frost engineers is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number four, that all disturbed lawn areas shall be sodded in lieu of hydro seeding. Number five, that underground sprinklers are to be provided for all landscaped and sodded areas and all planted materials shall be installed to the satisfaction of the inspection department and thereafter permanently maintained in a healthy condition. Number six, that the exterior elevations plan prepared by GMA architects as received by the Planning Commission on November 8, 2019 is hereby approved and shall be adhered to. Number seven, that this site shall meet either the City of Livonia or the Wayne County Stormwater Management Ordinance, whichever applies, and shall secure any required permits, including stormwater management permits, <laughs> wetlands permits, and soil erosion and sedimentation control permits from Wayne County, the City of Livonia, and or the State of Michigan that the petitioner shall correct to the fire department's satisfaction, this is number eight, that, that the stipulations contained in the correspondence dated October 11, 2019. Number nine, that all light fixtures shall not exceed 20 feet in height and shall be aimed and shielded to minimize any stray light trespassing across property lines and glaring into adjacent roadways. Number 10, that the Three walls of the trash dumpster area shall contain brick or a brick face that matches the brick on the building. The enclosure gates shall be of solid panel steel construction or durable long lasting solid panel fiberglass. The trash dumpster area shall always be maintained and when not in use, closed. Number 11, that only conforming signage is approved with this petition and any additional signage shall be separately submitted for review and approval by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number 12, that the specific plans referenced in this approving resolution shall be submitted to the inspection department at the time the building permits are applied for. And number 13, pursuant to section 19.10 of ordinance number 543, the zoning ordinance of the city of Livonia, this approval is valid for a period of one year only from the date of approval by city council. And unless a building permit is obtained, this approval shall be null and void at the expiration of said period. Is there support? Support. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Long, supported by Mr. Bongero. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mr. Long. Aye. Mr. Bongero. Aye. Uh, Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magno votes aye. Chair Walshaw votes aye. Motion passes. We'll go on to the City Council with an approving recommendation. Wish you luck on your project. Thank you, so much. Thank you for coming tonight. Don't forget your material samples, of course. <laughs> Thank you for bringing those. Those are always very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Council, the council will really like those too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can leave them, <laughs> leave them here if you want to. Yes. I'll yeah. take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're flying with them, I understand. It's just. 
<laughs> yeah, we just, just opened up a lot of space. <laughs> He's got to pay some serious luggage fees. Yeah, going through TSA with some bricks isn't the <laughs> safest thing in the world. It was his wife's luggage. It was great. <laughs> All right. We do have uh, one other. I'm hoping that wasn't a carry on. Good night. Good night. We do have one other item on our agenda that's the uh, uh, minutes. And the approval of the minutes of the 1,150th public hearing and regular meeting held on October 22nd, 2019. I almost uh, stole your thunder and said it uh, for you. Yeah, I've had it. <laughs> Is there a, a, a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Long, support? Support. Mrs. Smiley, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Long, support by Mrs. Smiley. If there's no objection, I think we can show seven on that. And that makes us batting 1,000 on approvals tonight. Uh, that takes us to the end of our meeting. Is there any other business to come before us? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. I move we adjourn. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think that's support. We do both. All right. <laughs> we have a motion by Mr. Caramagno, supported by Mr. Caramagno. No, we'll, we'll, <laughs> supported by Mrs. Smiley uh, to adjourn. If there's no objection, again, we'll safely show seven on that. And that takes us to the end of our meeting tonight. Uh, of course, I want to thank uh, Livonia Television staff for their contribution to our meeting. And with no further business, uh, we will adjourn the meeting tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Good night, Livonia. Well, good. That was good. <laughs>